Yo, I have a specialized fuse here. I think I bought this the first year they came out. They call it a plus bike because it's got three inch wide tires on it. I initially bought it to go mountain biking with, but I, I didn't like that too much. So I put some studded tires on it and I winter beat it. I'm going to put a motor on this thing, turn into a mid drive e-bike. I just built a 500 watt bike for the summer that runs off of 36 volts and I bought an extra battery for it so I ended up getting a 500 watt just because uh, I don't have to buy a battery for it. I bought a couple extra packages of stuff because I think I'm going to need it. I got one of these shift sensor things. I'm going to be doing a lot of torquing on it and the snow and stuff so when you shift apparently this turns the motor off so you don't break the chain. I figured that'd be kind of important. And I bought a 128 inch 12 speed chain because I think I'm going to need a longer chain. And then off to this box. I got this from China. AliExpress China Bafang mid drive e bike kit. Of course, with no battery. I got a wrench for the motor, some zip ties, and some Allen screws, and some bracketry, and some pedal arms. Oh, they gave me a light. I'm probably not going to use that for anything. I think this is a 44 tooth sprocket. This sprocket needs to be offset. I got the smallest one I could find with this, this kit that's offset. There's a chain guard for it. Looks like I got a throttle in here. More wires. Ah, this looks like a speed sensor. It's got a magnet in it. These are brake switches for my hydraulic brakes. I don't think I'm even going to use them. You hit the brakes and it turns the motor off. And uh, personally, I could care less. I got a little box. What's in the box? My little controller looking thing. They gave me a tool to take the pedals off. I don't even think I'm going to need this for my bike because I got different stuff. In a motor, 36 volt. Should be like 68 millimeter or something, something, something. And this plug is probably for my battery pack. And uh, they give me a white glove. They want me to be part of the white glove society, apparently. And no destructions. No, oh, that's great. I get to guess. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. This is why I think I'm going to need that offset sprocket because this one's flat. And if you can see, my chain line goes way in that way. And then I go down to the smallest gear and it goes out this way. And then I go in the center and my chain line's nice and square. So I want to be able to get a sprocket where the chain line is centered in the center. First thing I'm going to do is get this chain off of here. I have a chain breaking tool here. You can get these from Walmart pretty cheap. This one has a master link in it though. I haven't bothered to buy a master link tool yet. So I got, I don't know, I got some cable I had laying around. I'm gonna try to use that. I've used a coat hanger before. Mechanics wire type stuff. Put it on a vice grip and just Turn the thing until it pops out. I have a 15 millimeter here. There it goes. Left side, left handed thread. I got one of those hollow cranks. I think they call these stouts. Five millimeter. I'm just going to take these Allens out. Might as well take the pedal off on this side too. This should be a right-handed thread, right side right. This screw is an eight millimeter. Gonna give this a little whack with a dead blow. Got a shim here I can take out. Then I can pound this crank through and I got it out. Now I have a fun little dilemma here because I have a pressed in threadless bearing here. And the shaft in my motor, it's got to go in this hole, and the hole's too small. 
I just got a long pry bar and a hammer and I'm just going to put it on this bearing race and try to tap it out. Yep, it still won't go. I'm going to pound this other bearing out. Tape some uh, 220 grit sandpaper on here. I'm going to try to sand this out. Now that I got this all hogged out, I got to learning that this insert is plastic. I thought it was metal, so I don't think any of this is going to work for me. Try to jam this in here. Okay, I have some cabling that's all together wrong, so I got to figure out how to reroute these. Then this collar screws in here, and um, that's wrong too. I got a feeling this bushing I can just hammer right out. Wow, it's just some cheap plastic junk. I have a press-in shell coming for this, so I can't put my motor on yet. I have this shift sensor. There's a few different ways you can put these on. I don't have any open cable anywhere. The casing goes all the way up to the shifter, so I'm thinking I should put it right here. So I got to get some of this cabling off. I'm going to try to do this without cutting any of the cable because I want as much as I can get out of this thing. So I just crimped this so I could get this off of here. I don't want this cable to fray either. I won't be able to get it back into the casing when I cut the casing. And I'm going to solder this end so it doesn't fray on me. I got some tinning flux here. And I'm just going to poke it right in there so it's all nice and fluxed up. I have some flux core solder. I don't know the number of it or anything. And a soldering gun. You're going to need about 75 watts or more if you're going to do something like this. I'm just going to pull the trigger. And I'm going to fill this end up with solder. I'm just going to take my fingernail and try to pluck it. It's not fraying out, so I got it. As far as the shifter goes, I got it in the lowest gear. And when I got it in the lowest gear, there should be a... A little bit of play in this cable because this high speed set screw is what sets the lowest gear and then the rest is all in the cable tension. I have a five millimeter cable then I can just pull this all through and I can go up to my shifter loosen this pinch bolt up. I just do that just to kind of get it out of the way so I can get access to this cable. There's a little window in here. Pluck that out of the way. And then way down in there, I can see the cable. I'm gonna to try to push this cable up through the bottom. Little pick and I got it. Now I'm gonna pull through a good foot just to make sure that that cable's back in here somewhere. So I don't cut the cable. I got this bushing here. And that can go right in this hole here. But I don't like that idea because it looks like something that's going to snap right off on me. So I can take this out. And then I got two female ends that can go in between this cable. I can pull this collar off right here. As you can see, I had a little wipe out, so I kind of wrecked that a little bit. And uh, I probably want to take out as much casing as the width of this or less. I'm just going to whack off this much. Then I want to open this casing up, make sure the cable can go through that. So yeah, I'm just going to cut a little chunk of this off because it's going to set it up right, right about there. Poke this again. Then I can put this collar back on here. Stick that in there like that. I can push my cable back through. 
I want the wire on this side. Kind of give that a little twist so I can get through the wheel in there. There's a little wheel in there. Looks like that's going to be a pretty good place for it. Now I can feed my cable back. Get my vice grip and just pull on it just a little bit. That feels about right. Now after the high gear, when I'm clicking up to these other sprockets, if it doesn't shift right, I can just move this barrel adjuster right here up and down until the rest of these gears match up right. Now I can deal with this handlebar stuff. I got to get this grip off of here. That's a three millimeter. Oh, that was difficult. That's about one of the easiest grips to ever get off of a bike. Four millimeter here. And this one I already loosened up for my shifter. Now I can put my display on. Looks like I got a 2.5 millimeter here. Looks like I'm going to have a pretty active thumb here. This is my thumb throttle. And then I got my shifters. All that stuff might get in my way. I could put it on the left side, but I'm not doing that. Looks like there's a 3 millimeter hiding back here for this thumb screw. I don't want to get that really tight either. After making some adjustments, it looks like that's where I'm going to want all of that. I might be hitting my throttle while I shift, but I got that shift sensor in there, so it should shut off the engine if I make that mistake anyways. I might as well put my battery mount on next. That's going on these three bolts where a bottle cage could go. I got three different connectors on this thing, which is just pretty ridiculous. So I'm probably going to cut it down so I just got one connector. Looks like I got four millimeters on this. Might be a good idea to put some blue Loctite on these. I'm going to do without. You're going to want at least four threads on these screws. Looks like I'm just going to make it. And that's my battery. Now I can hook up my speed sensor. The motor needs to know that this wheel is turning. So I got this sensor here. There's a little screw hole here so I can set it. Some double stick tape. Just going to peel this off and I'm going to stick it right here. The frame isn't really round enough for that tape to work really well, but it holds it in place for now. Then I can zip tie it down. There's some little grooves in here for the zip ties. That should be good and tight. Cut off the excess. Then I got this rare earth magnet, spoke magnet. It's got a little set screw for it. There's a little X on here. I want to line it up with that. See like so. I just noticed these swelling knobs gave me a tamper-proof Torx to deal with. There's a little button in the center of this thing. So you got to use a Torx that's got a hole in it. It's a T20. Looks like that's going to bend the spoke a little bit when you tighten it up. Then I'm going to want an air gap in here. I'm going to guess and say I want about 5 millimeters. If I get a stick or something running around here and whacking all that stuff, it'll just break. It's got a little LED here that'll light up every time the magnet passes. And if it doesn't light up, I'll just have to get it a little closer. And I have a little baby set screw here. Looks like a number two Phillips is going to work for it. Just going to stick this in here and thread it down. It doesn't need to be really tight. And that should hold it in there. I'm pretty sure the shift cable is going to cause a problem for me because I'm going to have to put some hard bends in this and pull these cables over this way for this motor to fit. So I'm just going to take this clamp off. 
that way I can pull this over hopefully it'll work without hitting my tire I had to order this bottom bracket shell PF30 from FSA it's got some English threads on it what you got to do is measure the inside diameter 46 millimeter there and then I got to measure the width and it's 73 millimeters wide from here to here I'm gonna get a little brake cleaner and a rag I'm just gonna try to get whatever lubricants that might be in this everything looks absolutely lovely in there it's all boogered up really bad but it looks like it'll go through okay I got some Permatex sleeve retainer I'm gonna put in this thing I've used this for cylinder sleeves doing machine work well, there's a line on this bottom bracket and for whatever reason they want this side on the drive side the chain side clean that up with a little brake cleaner I'm gonna put a little bit on the inside of here put a little bit on here I'm gonna run it through the drive side I have an old bearing installer I'm gonna use to put this on just because I have one I'm sure you can go to a hardware store and get like some threaded rod and some really big washers or something. I gotta make sure this is nice and square. I can't have it crooked at all. So I'm just gonna tap this thing in. Let's give it some light taps and make sure it's square. If it's not gonna go in square, you're gonna wreck your bottom bracket. Feels like it's going in nice. I think I'm going to have to put this on the ground. My bike stand doesn't like this at all. This thing is super tight. No joke. I'm going to put an extra spacer on here. Get some shorter threads. Ta-da! Now that I got that all taken care of. Looks like that'll slide in really nice. It's a little bit loose. But I noticed if I measure the outside of this bottom bracket and then measure this, it's going to be sitting on the outside of this motor. And I don't want that. It's got a seat on the inside. So I went to the hardware store. I found a quarter by one and seven eighths by 14 machine bushing and I had to file out the center a little bit I sanded it down too because there were some sharp edges on one side and that'll fit down in there like that and if I take and put a straight edge on it I can see there's just a little bit of a gap so it's a little bit higher than this side right here looks like there's gonna be a clamp here that's gonna be in my way that's a 2.5 millimeter. Well, I think I got these cables routed good enough. They're all the way over to one side. And this motor is all the way up against the frame right there. I checked these cables and made sure my derailleur and everything still works, and it does, so they're not they're not pinched at all. So it's just enough to make the cables work. And then I went to the hardware store and I got some stainless steel nuts and some stainless steel washers. And if I stick them in between here, it's just a little bit tight to where it won't slide in. And that's exactly what I want. There's also a lock nut that belongs on here and there's no threads for it. So I won't be able to put this lock nut on, which is kind of a bummer. These factory bolts, they're... Um, 20 millimeter with a spacer they're going to hang out right about there with a lock washer i don't like that at all so i went to the hardware store and i i got a couple of bolts that were 25 millimeters and i cut them down to about 23 millimeters and it should be just right i can screw the the bottom one the bottom one bottoms out so you got to make sure that it's not too long and I screwed it all the way in and it, it, it goes all the way flush. So if I put a little lock washer in here, it'll be just perfect. I didn't like how loose this shaft was in this shell. So I got some aluminum tape and I put about four coats lengthwise on this thing to try to tighten everything up. 
This is stuff you use for regular duct work. Yeah, that tightened it up really nice. Doesn't flop around anymore. I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on these threads. This thing's got little splines on one side. This side's flat. I want the spline side towards the bike. Looks like there's a there's a rounded edge on this nut too and, and a flat edge. I want the flat edge towards the bike. I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on these bolts too. Got a lock washer here that came with the bike. And my two washers and my nut. Just gonna get these started for now. Get my cabling routed right. And I'm gonna tighten this nut. It says right on here 50 to 60 Newton meters, which is um, about 40 foot pounds. I don't do the Newton meter thing because I'm an American. We're too stubborn to change over to the metric system. I don't have an actual torque wrench, so I just have to guess. And I'm a really good guesser. I'm gonna hit this with a hammer. Just give it a good guess. That should be good. A little more for good measure. Now that I got those, I can tighten these bolts up. Generally, six by one millimeters are about 10 foot pounds. Now I get to see if my sprocket fits. And it hits the chain stay. Well, I got some number eight stainless flat washers. And I stuck them behind there. I stacked them up three. They're in there. They were fun getting in. And it's just that close. Probably got about 20 thousandths of an inch gap. These are five millimeters, so they're probably about six foot pounds. So I'm just going to go in a star pattern and tighten these down. I put some blue Loctite on these too. And that should work. Now I got this chain I get to deal with. Apparently 10 speeds like this, I need to add two teeth. And if it's over 42 teeth, like a 11 or 12 speed, I would have to add four teeth. So I'm just not gonna use my derailleur. And I gotta add two, one, two. And I just gotta make sure that that's an inside link. Because this master link is outside to outside. There's two pins in it. So I'm just going to double check my stuff. My chain's tight. Back up one, one, two links. So I'm actually going three links. I'm going to push this pin out of here. And that better be the right length. Now I got this derailleur all the way into the smallest gear, so I can go around the smallest gear, around this cog here, back up through this cog here, yeah. <sighs> now I just gotta wonder if this thing's gonna shift the way it's supposed to I put a little longer cable casing here just to make up for this shift sensor and give my casing a little more length for this bend I had to make. And I almost ran out of cable, but I got it adjusted right. I had to move this barrel adjuster a little bit. Now I get to start to play with my wiring. I got this wire here for the shift sensor. I'm going to run it right along with this shift cable. This is a yellow connector and the shift cables orange line up the arrows on all these connectors and they just plug right in just like so. I'm going to zip tie this up and I just noticed my top gear chain line is absolutely horrible. I'm at the fourth gear up and it's straight right there. I get all the way up into the highest gear and it's the chain line's off so bad that it's 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 starting to jump on the sprocket. It's probably a gear I shouldn't even use. I can put this chain protector on now. There's some dainty little screws in this bag for that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try to deal with my 
speed sensor wire. I'm going to zip tie it up with my brake line. Yeah, I'm just going to cut these zip ties here and tie it in with that. I have a power cable here I need to route. Probably go up this way. I got way too much cable and two of the wrong connectors. So I'm going to make my own -y. little cut there, little cut there. And that there is a real waterproof connector. A little too blue for my taste though. I better get a Sharpie after it. The only wires I have left now is one for the controller and one for the throttle. I have an extension cord for this and there's two extra wires for the brake levers that I'm not going to use. And those all hook in down here. And all these wires too I have running up the back in front of the tire. That seems to be the best way to route these. I have these two idiot proof color coated wires plugged in. Now I suppose I'll put a battery in it and see if this thing wants to work. You gotta push this button in, I think. Oh, yeah, powered up. Says I'm on speed one. And it's working. Put it on five, see what happens. Okay, we're kind of cruising there. Wonder if this thing will work when I crank it. Oh, yeah. I think what I'm going to do is try to cheat a little bit here. I have a low speed adjuster. Low is slow, so low is for the biggest gear. I'm going to crank this baby in until it jumps down another gear. I can still hear it clicking a little bit, so I'll turn it in a little more. That sounds about right. And that way when I try to click it up into high gear, it won't go into high gear. And that chain's not jumping. That shift sensor's working. Well, they didn't put nearly enough zip ties in this kit, but... I put a couple there and I, I ran it right up with the brake line. It's kind of a big, gaudy, ugly mess, but that's the way it's got to be. I wanted the, the thicker portion to bend the most. And I can turn the bars one way or the other and it doesn't, doesn't affect it anyway. So the last thing I have to do is put on these crank arms. There's a left and a right crank arm. That's because one of these are reverse thread for your pedals. And um, that's really super close. I'm not liking that at all. There's offset arms I can buy for this too that'll pull them out farther. But for now, I'm going to tighten this one down and see if it touches. It's, it's got a tapered square on it so that the more you tighten it, the tighter it gets. Man, that's that's unreasonably close. There is a left and a right pedal for this. There's an R on there and an L on there. And the threads on the left side are backwards. You probably want to put a little grease on these threads. These are already greased up pretty good though, so I'm not doing it. My pedals are on and this bike should be ready to rock and roll. Nice and noisy. Looks like we're doing about 20 miles an hour on this thing. Kind of sounds like one of them annoying four-wheel drive trucks. Too bad I can't roll coal. This thing's actually kind of a beast. It's going up all these big hills in low gear in Battle Creek at about 10 miles an hour. I don't even have to pedal.
I suppose this is where I go riding off into the sunset. Okay, bye.